This plane was also designed by Frank Barnwell. It's the Bristol Fighter, the F2B Fighter. Now, unlike the Scout, which was an unarmed aeroplane, it wasn't even designed as a warplane, this very much was. Frank Barnwell flew in First World War, but he was recalled because of his excellent skills in designing aircraft. And he brought what he learnt in World War I aerial combat in designing this aircraft. So this has got a synchronised machine gun. That means the gun and the engine are linked together. That allows you to fire through the propeller without shooting it, which is never advisable. Just above the grill there, you can see a hole where the bullets will come out. It's timed so that when the propeller's in the way, vertical, the firing pin's removed from the gun, so even if your finger's on the trigger, a bullet won't come out and shoot your own propeller. These propellers were handmade. They're wood laminated together, a hardwood, and they have to be built to very high tolerances, otherwise they can shake themselves and the plane apart. Before we had synchronization gear though, we did occasionally shoot our propellers. It was deemed three bullets in a propeller was acceptable. The Bristol Fighter really made Bristol's name as an aircraft manufacturer in World War I. Although the company was called the British and Colonial Aeroplane Company, their aircraft were Bristol aircraft. It was used by the RF for 10 years after the war, and although production stopped in 1919, they continued to be flown uh, around the world. The last one we know flying with a service was with the Royal New Zealand Air Force, and they were flying one until 1938. This became Britain's first truly multi-role combat aircraft. It could navigate, it could observe, it could fight, and it could bomb. It's a two-seater aircraft, pilot in the front, rear gunner in the back and he would either have one or two Lewis machines.